So I just had a very, very profound revelation here, and a deep insight, and I had to capture this on, on the recording. I finally realized why um, people who move gracefully through the air, and I normally don't do this kind of thing, so like bear with me, I have to be kind of somewhat anim animated to explain this. So people that move gracefully through, th through their realities, uh, martial artists, dancers, you see this a lot in like religious and spiritual settings where the leader, the priest, the guru, whatever it is, has a very graceful way of moving. You see this in like Tai Chi and Qigong and different um, yoga, you know, different exercises and stuff. And I realized today, fuck, this is a profound insight. I, I realized today why they do this. And the answer is actually in, for multiple different reasons. It's not even a conscious thing that they're doing. What they're doing is they're slowing down time in a very practical way where everything is very, very slow, very deliberate. There's no jerky movements. And it feels a little silly. I got to be honest with you. It feels a little silly doing it right now. But I'm past this like embarrassment of doing stuff like this. So, and I do practice Qigong every once in a while. So, like the crane, you know, the, the bird. What it is, is it's not just that they're moving slowly. It's that every movement is carefully calculated. But not in like a, a pre uh, a preconceived, I don't know if that's the right word. It's not an intentional thing. It's not like they're saying, okay, I'm going to move like this, then I'm going to move like this, I'm going to try not to do this, and I'm just going to flow into this. And It's not like that. This is the beauty of this, what I'm, what I'm discovering, is that it's happening all at the same time. There's no more thinking. There's no more doing. It's all one fluid motion. You see? Swimming. Swimming is the perfect example for this because when you're in the water, your whole body is supported, and it helps you to be more graceful. You're more like a fish. You know, you watch fish swim. They don't waste energy at all. They're completely water dynamic. They move through the water like birds move through air. It's another good example is birds. Another one here I wanted to add as I was doing the post-production is you see this in the Taoist practices is uh, firing the arrow or releasing the arrow, I think it is. It's basically shooting an, an arrow uh, with a bow. The release cannot be calculated it can't be uh, a conscious thing you have to let go and and will yourself to let go at the same time otherwise it's going to throw off your shot it's a perfect example it's just like the swimming thing it has to be done at the same exact time and the, the best way to do that is to just let go and just let it happen don't try to shoot the arrow you know don't try to shoot the bow just shoot the bow it's the whole matrix thing i just realized it's uh, the whole Stop trying to hit me and hit me. Same idea. But you see where I'm going with this and why this is so exciting? It's a big discovery because it, it brings to light that a lot of the times when we move too fast, if we're doing the opposite of this, we're just kind of like hurrying around. And it, that's very, those are very jerky motions. Those are very, that the opposite of deliberate. These are uh, <laughs> like uh, almost instinctual reptile brain stuff you know and it's no place to live you don't want to live in the fight-or-flight mode constantly it has its use sometimes you have to be like that but it's almost as if the brain sacrifices a bit of its uh, um, optimization like things are not quite as calculated and, and, and cut and dry because there's more thought being put to the parts of the brain that handle um, live situations i'm not explaining this right but you you get where i'm going you know when you're when you're doing something live like you have to put oh um people talk about this all the time where they maybe it's not a good example but i'll try anyway uh they're in a car and they're just about to have a car accident and they say that time slows down and you can almost do more in a smaller amount of time than you normally could what's going on there i think it's because all the brain's resources are being diverted to live action now now you need to be here in the moment it's like the ultimate mindfulness like you are completely immersed in that in the time and situation 
Uh, you're not thinking about anything else except for that. And that allows you to do crazy things that you would normally not be able to do. Like that dude that uh, lifted up the helicopter to get that one guy out of the, the crash. There's no way that guy could have just been like, okay, I'm going to go and lift up. It couldn't have been pre uh, preset, predetermined like that. It wouldn't have worked. He would have broke his back. But in, in those situations, we can do amazing things because our brains are so finely tuned to this stuff that it happens all by itself subconsciously which is just makes it even more amazing so back to the fluid mo movements thing uh, there's so many benefits to that right like not only the, the will your heart rate slow down because you're moving slower your brain's not using nearly as much uh, energy as it normally would. You're kind of like, you're kind of like shutting down two parts of the brain to 50% to say, let's bring, instead of going back and forth from 100% to 100% or whatever percent you want to give it, uh, let's like bring that down half what it normally would be. And instead of going back and forth, let's use them both at the same time. So you're using 100% less energy, 50 and 50 together, but you're accomplishing more in a way because you're doing more in, in a, a given set time. That's weird because that's almost exactly what I said on the, on the opposite side, which makes it me think that it's not an opposite thing, that it's actually a polar thing. Wow, you can get really deep with this one. Anyway, the practicality in all this is that by doing Tai Chi, and by observing other people that, that do this kind of stuff, you see that there's a benefit there. You see it right off the bat. Again, lower heart rate, more calculated uh, intentional breathing, lends itself well to breath work and yoga and Tai Chi, and doing like exercises. And what a sense of mastery this gives you over your life, you know? There's a technique that I'm learning in uh, Wicca where it's basically you're learning to, and I'm not very good at it now, but I, I will be, uh, you're learning to create an energy ball. And this energy ball is like, imagine like a, like one of those uh, tether balls or what? It, what is it? One of those like dodge balls, you know, like the red ones, that those rubber ones. Imagine something about that size but it's made out of light. And what the exercise is, and all credit to, uh, to Mary for her uh, Celtic uh, shamanism and, and Wiccan practices and her, her courses that she develops are just top notch. But the cool part about this is once you've learned to develop the energy ball, you then squeeze it into yourself, into your hands, and then it goes in down your arms and into your body. So, not only are you creating a light ball, which is really cool, but then you're absorbing it, right? And then you start off with just being able to harness the, the power of the ball and to feel it there, then absorbing it. And then you start, there, it's like a three-parter, three-part practice. And then you start visualizing color. So now it's like a rainbow ball and you're taking in all the, the colors of the rainbow. Like it's just amazing stuff. Um, there's a there's a other part to it that I could go into, but I'll ju just to say that um, that would lend itself well, this concept we're talking about would lend itself well to the energy ball practice because it is very graceful and deliberate. And what I was going to say earlier is by doing this, you tend to, it sort of seeps into your, your everyday consciousness. So now you're living your life in a graceful way. It's not just physical movements anymore. You're thinking in a graceful and deliberate way. You have more confidence. You know, I could feel it. You can see it probably in me. Since the beginning of the video to now, I feel more in control. I feel like empowered, but not in an oppressive way, just in a self-confident, like where I should be, like where everybody should be. I feel like I could better communicate with people right now. I feel like I could um, handle my stress better and my anger and I could calm myself down easier in this state see what I'm saying so 
it's huge it's a huge discovery um because it's not just the silliness factor right there's that it's like, eh, i don't want to <laughs> but hey just get out of your shell and, and just do it but it's not just that it's not the silliness factor only it's it's that we're resistant to want to accept that it could be that simple but it is it totally is uh it's the whole smile thing force a smile on your face and then all of a sudden it triggers something in your brain to want to keep smiling and be happy anyway that's it hope you enjoyed this video kind of unusual but it was it was such a profound insight i was like i have to make a video about this so thank you so much for watching appreciate your viewership hope you got something out of this if you did let me know in the comments if you didn't also let me know in the comments i'm always open to constructive feedback and uh, hopefully uh your day is going well and having a, a nice sunday today is january 28 2024 just fyi 3 3 52 p.m i don't know why i'm saying this but i will bid you a graceful adieu and i will see you next time goodbye <laughs>